Fantastic. There we are live. Welcome, welcome to this week's Tuesday Live. I'm your holistic nutrition practitioner. My name is Lucas Simmons, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about histamines. That's actually the focus of the entire month of September on my social media feeds. And it's really just to help bring light to an often super convoluted, very complicated, please don't go down the rabbit hole kind of situation. So histamine intolerance is one of the things that we're talking about. We're talking about mast cell activation as well. And we're talking about anything where histamines could be part of a convoluted piece of the puzzle when somebody is struggling through histamine mediated troubles. So we're going to be talking about different aspects of it. Today, we're actually zeroing in on my one top best most favorite food when it comes to histamine intolerance or histamine mediated issues. It is the humble little pea sprout. Eli guessed it. <laughs> If you have any questions or want to hit me up with anything that comes up while we're having uh, this one-way conversation, it feels like, please turn it into a two-way conversation. Pop your questions below in the comments. This is going to get uploaded to Instagram and to YouTube afterwards as well. So if you're watching this after the fact, yeah, hit me up with your questions. I'm here for you. Okay, here's the deal. Histamines, are they a problem? Uh, sometimes. Uh, do I hate them? Heck no! I love them. And in fact, I think when they show up in people, it's a really good indicator that somebody who's struggling with histamine things, that person is someone who actually wants to get better. That's the first and most important piece to know this. So while I don't think histamines are awesome for everyone, I really don't think they are the problem itself. You need to... Ha struggling with histamines is an invitation to dive deeper. So only dive when you're ready and only dive when you have a support team around you because I'll tell you if safety is not part of the equation here or security or feeling supported then you can do all the work you want but without that safety security component you may not get the results you're looking for. Okay having said that let's talk about pea sprouts. So here's the deal when you have histamine issues it can be one of a couple of different things hi shannon histamines can show up if you have adrenals that are having a hard time making ends meet and are just working all day long histamines can be an issue if you have something called mast cell activation disorder histamines can be an issue if you have a hard time breaking them down at the gut level and histamines can be an issue if you have a hard time making the enzyme at the liver level that breaks them down once you've used them. See, here's the thing. Histamines are a normal, natural part of every day. You need it for so many different things in the body. You need it for brain function, neurotransmitters, digestion. You need histamine to mount an inflammatory reaction. So histamines are not the enemy. Part of where the problem lies is in the clearing of it. Well, there's a helicopter in my neighborhood. Oops, somebody better keep running. <laughs> But histamines can also be an issue when someone is sounding the alarm, somebody's body is sounding the alarm all the time. So that's part of the issue when we're talking about histamine stuff. Stop texting me, people. Shh. Keep it to yourself. No, don't stop texting me. I'm kidding. Um, anyway, it's distracting me. So when histamines are an issue, it's really important to do a little bit of digging to see what's happening at the root of it. Is it an adrenal, a gut, or a liver thing? Or is your immune system on high alert all the time and why? So that's the first piece. The second piece, if it is a gut mediated issue, here's how one of the ways it could show up. And I mean, it would be different for so many people. You've heard of leaky gut, right? Yeah, all right. It's that leakiness, the porousness between cells, the junctions between that single cell layer at your intestinal lining that are now being pushed apart for whatever reason. There can be 82 quadrillion reasons. GMO foods, medications, leaky gut, a history of antibiotics where you didn't do a good probiotic round afterwards. Uh, it could be because of chronic stress. It could be because of toxin exposure. It could be because you're dealing with a lot of stuff in your life. Like, what else? Like, I sort of half joke all the time that I don't know anyone under the age of 75 that's not working through leaky gut. And I kind of mean it, but here's why it's really important to know when it comes to histamine issues. There is an enzyme that you make at that intestinal lining level, okay? It's only one cell thick, so it's a pretty important barrier that keeps the outside world out and the inside world in, because you're essentially a donut, right? 
So when that food comes down the tract, the idea is that intestinal lining is working well enough to make an enzyme called DAO. That stands for diamine oxidase. DAO enzyme is a naturally occurring enzyme that you're supposed to make in the gut. And what's an enzyme? It's a chemical compound that breaks things down. It's like a pair of scissors that breaks foods down or certain things down. Now the beautiful part about DAO, when you're making it, it is getting rid of that histamine that's coming in through your food. Because histamine is a naturally occurring thing. It is on all protein. It develops more on leftover foods. Some foods are higher naturally containing histamines. Some, uh, like fish and shellfish, develop histamines faster than any other food out there. Fermented foods, quite high in histamines. Okay, so why is there a problem? Well, the problem lies at the gut level for some people and it can be a combination of a few things, but this is one of the pieces it can be, that you have a hard time making that enzyme at that gut level. So first things first. Yes, you can take DAO enzymes. Yes, you can start to consume the pea sprouts because this is the beauty of it. Pea sprouts contain diamine oxidase. Brilliant. Diamine oxidase in the pea form is the same one as what you're making in your gut that helps to break down the histamines coming in through foods. So it would seem that one of the solutions may be to chop up pea sprouts and put them on every meal. And the idea is when it's on your meal, when it's on your plate, the DAO enzyme is in there and it's going to help to break down any histamines that could be on the rest of a plate. So it's a little helper, a little leg up. Fantastic! Here's a couple of things to know about pea sprouts. If they're grown, the darker they are grown or the less amount of light they're grown in, the higher the DAO concentration will be. So this is a really good one for those who are super duper struggling with DAO enzymes or gut lining health and are currently in a histamine flare up. Then this is when growing your own sprouts will take you that extra step. You can totally buy them at the store, but I'll promise you they won't have as high an amount of that diamine oxidase enzyme as if you were growing them at home. And here's the deal. Make sure when you're eating the sprouts, it's just the sprouts, not the seeds themselves. Because the seeds themselves won't be containing that DAO and they can contribute a little bit to leaky gut if digestion is not up to snuff happening down there. In the guts. Down there. That's my new down there. Down there. In the intestines. Hi, Tim. Okay, so DAO enzyme you can get from pea sprouts. Love it, that's so great. Awesome, then it seems like the solution is done. We're done, right, Luca? No, don't get mad, but I'm gonna say something. Okay, diamine oxidase in pea sprout form, fantastic, love it, so great. But it's not fixing the issue. It's a Band-Aid solution, and it's helping you get through the day Good God, I love real food for that reason. But you're not fixing the issue. So if diamine oxidase, you're seeing some relief by eating some of the pea sprouts, you can probably make that conclusion that, oh, I wonder if I'm having a hard time making that myself at the gut lining. Then you now need to figure out why you're not making it at the gut lining. Sometimes it's a genetic thing and you're just a little bit less able to make it than other people's genetics would say, to give you the how-to, right? Um, but it really bears repeating that while it's a wonderful solution to get through the day, it's an invitation to dive deeper and to really get at the root piece. So while I think pea sprouts are one of the best, most my one of my most favorite foods when it comes to working through histamine-mediated troubles, I gotta say, Oh, look, here it comes again, meat stock. Meat stock is actually my favorite low histamine food. Here's why. Meat stock is a short cook, quite low in histamines. Fantastic. Why is meat stock so great, Luca? Well, meat stock is that best food for those cells at the intestinal lining. And when they have their favorite food, they want to hang out and like hold hands. And that's how you bring the junctions between the cells back together. So those cells that are coming apart and giving you something they call leaky gut, when that is happening at the gut lining, now you're having a hard time making that DAO enzyme. Eat pea sprouts, you sort of fixed it, right? No, no. No, you provided the enzymes that you're not able to make, so good work. 
But that's not a long-term solution. Your long-term solution has to be get at the root. Well, where's the root? Leaky gut. Oh, what's the best food for leaky gut? Oh, meat stock. Meat stock is a lower cook. You cook it a lot less time. It is simmered for poultry an hour, an hour and a half. If you get an instant pot, you'll have even less histamines. So if you yourself are struggling with histamines right now, get on my blog. I'm gonna drop the link below in all of the social media pieces on how to get the recipe to make a short cook meat stock. If you are really super duper struggling with histamines right now, I'm gonna caution you, whatever chicken pieces you're using, the medicine is in that first inch next to the bones where you can peel the skin off. Skin on chickens, it's actually higher histamines. Mm. If your histamine load is feeling pretty manageable these days, it's okay to include the skin. There's a lot of really great nutrients that will support the gut lining piece you're looking for. But for those who are currently in an active flare-up, chicken skin is out. Yeah, you can do bones from beef, from bison, from lamb, absolutely. Those will take a bit longer, and I've got recipes in that link that I'll drop later. But I'll say start with simple chicken backs and necks. If you can, source chicken backs and necks that are frozen and you'll have even less histamines in the end result. And that helps get at the root when there is a histamine issue. So yay pea sprouts, but double yay meat stock. I think I might get a t-shirt with that. Would anybody get one? All right, there you have it. That is this week's Tuesday Live. If you have any questions, hit me up below. If you yourself are struggling through histamine issues, I have a couple of things. I have an online class. You can take it today. I'll link to that as well. I better write this down because I'll forget. Okay, stock and class. So I'll link to the class below in the comments. If you wanted to understand and know where you can start today, that's a good spot. If you're already overwhelmed, which PS is a big part of the picture when histamines are an issue, overwhelm is quite often happening, then know that I can be an ally. I have lots of tools at the ready where we can work one-on-one -on -one and we can personalize a program so that you can feel better. That's the idea. We're trying to get you to get through the day handling life with the tools you've got at the ready. We build that toolkit one thing at a time and we figure out why histamines are an issue for you specifically and very personally. And then we build a unique plan that is fitted to however histamines are showing up for you. So get in touch. In the meantime, I wish you a lovely rest of week. Thank you for tuning in. Hello, Tanita. And I wish you a brilliant Tuesday. We'll see you again. Thanks for tuning in. Salut, à bientôt.